Before I start talking about curator options for the cloud, I want to remind you that in the IBM Security Learning Academy, there is very quality, high quality, free training available, and I will provide a link to it in the video description. In the early days of the IBM Security Division, a mandate was made that all devices that were applicable will be appliances and that those appliances will be created out of an ISO image. So the very same code runs for that appliance regardless of whether it's a physical instance or a virtual one. That made that several customers chose to deploy these appliances on their VMware, but also facilitated the, tran the transition into cloud providers like AWS, SoftLayer, or Azure. In order to describe the different options, I'm going to use a silly analogy. Stay with me for a second. Let's think about the ways we uh, make and eat pizza. I'm going to start with the first model. When I make pizzas at home, so I take care of the dough, I get the tomato sauce, the cheese, the toppings, the, I bake it in my own oven, I prepare the sodas, I set the tables, and we, we have a pizza. Of course, I have a lot of control. I know what's happening on the, on, the, on the kitchen. I know what quality of the ingredient is, so I'm in total control. But the, the downsides of that that I have to manage that infrastructure. I need to patch those devices. I need to mi do those migrations, and you know th that that involves some some people. I need to have some good cooks that not only do my SOC operation but also that manage that infra infrastructure. Also, in terms of the scalability, I need to you know purchase uh, uh, more appliances or. or if I'm doing virtual, I need to deploy more appliances. If I want high availability and disaster recovery, I need to set that up, and that adds on the number of appliances. And uh, so, so it's it's a very effective. We have many customers doing this, but it it you know consumes some resources. Let's see some other options. Say I don't want to do all that that work. I just want to buy the pizza frozen, but I want to bake it at home so I have it fresh when I want to consume it. So let's, let's see why I'm making that silly analogy with uh, the options that we have for curator on that. So in the case of uh, SaaS applications like Salesforce, uh, Office 365, and many others, for quite some time, curator has has DSMs built that performs RESTful APIs and retrieves those logs and you know you can consume those in your standard environment and you get uh, quite a bit of visibility of what's happening on the cloud. But with AWS, SoftLayer and Azure, chances are that you're going to be doing a lot of API calls. Eh? and the way, and I'm going to use the, the terminology uh, of the things that happen on AWS, but something equivalent exists for uh, software and Azure as well. So in order for you to get better control of all those uh, API calls, AWS uh, implemented something called CloudTrail, which is nothing more than JSON type of uh, uh, logs that you retrieve also via API that basically says the who did what where and that is something that that uh, that we support and there's also another component called cloudwatch and briefly think of it as a as a way of doing monitoring and alert so you set up you know some kind of a uh, rules and I want to know when this happened and that happens etc so so you get you know quite a bit of visibility but what you don't get from cloud providers are flows for several reasons you are not going to get uh, those uh, from them what you get instead is something in the case of again this is in the case of Amazon something called 
VPC flow logs or virtual private cloud flow logs. And these are kind of uh, uh, firewall logs that talks about uh, ACLs and access and you know what what somebody tried to access these and, and was denied, somebody was uh, allowed, etc. Uh, on the emulation, on the Ethernet emulation that Amazon does inside its cloud. So it's something not as good as flows, but you know it's as best as, as it gets. And when when we say that Curator support this, it is important to denote that this feeds into Curator taxonomy. So when we get a you know, uh, we, if we have a rule in Curator that, that says um, fire when you have multiple firewall multiple uh, logging uh, failures, it's gonna trigger regardless of whether the failures the logging failures occur in my network or within the cloud itself so it's actually pretty good but let's continue with my silly analogy and see the other options that exist let's say i don't want to even bake the the pizza uh, if available i want to have it deliver warm and at home at the time that i'm ready to to consume it so how does that translate into the into the cloud options uh, for curator so I can put my trusted event collectors again because they are they are virtual images so it can even be in bare metal uh, on the cloud to collect the actual logs from the infrastructure that resides in the cloud and feed those into my event processor on my console locally not a problem we have several customers actually doing that but also nothing prevents me from having the console and the event processor remotely and I access that console via via browser but what are the considerations that could make me put one box here and there one thing that the early adopters of this model in the cloud have realized is that AWS might be cost effective in some aspect but not on the networking I mean if I get a lot of data uh, for you know logs and, and information going from different networks the minute it exits the the Amazon network even if it goes to another Amazon network in another country uh, those costs can really uh, begin to erode the benefits of the savings of going into the cloud so that's an important consideration that can determine where do I uh, put my different boxes of course the other consideration is my geolocations I mean wh where are my offices where are the places where the, the my infrastructure resides that I need to collect uh, the the actual uh, logs from another important consideration is data residences there are some strict rules particularly in Europe Australia that determines where you can where the data should reside and should not uh, leave uh, that particular country so that may determine where you actually deploy your boxes and, and and I went into some details on on that individual box uh, deployment in the first and second part of this uh, video series yet one more consideration is the performance of you know for example how how fast do I want the result for those uh, searches to be what the latency of my network is uh, what's the bandwidth I mean all those things uh, need to be taken into consideration let's do the the next and final part of this uh, silly pizza uh, analogy to talk about the one that I think it is the most interesting one I don't even want to bother with with setting at the table and do that I just want to go to a fine place and enjoy pizza I want to dine out so what I what I the option I'm going to be talking in here is called QRock which is QReader on the cloud and what that is it's a full my very own not not a shared environment but my very own curator on the cloud and how does that interacts with with my uh, my physical network so I have my infrastructure in here and what the, the way that this thing works is that you deploy physically or virtual a device called a data gateway and that's the one that is going to be connecting to your intranet to collect all those uh, logs 
So think of this data gateway as an event collector with VPN capability and flow collecting capability and, and QVN for, for vulnerability and, and even uh, Q&I. And you access your, your console uh, from a browser and, and, and either you manage your console with your SOC operator or you get any MSSP, uh, any, any business partner or IBM it themselves to actually manage the console uh, for you. Uh, the, the advantage of this approach is mainly that, that you get the very same visibility that you enjoy on the, on, the, on the first model where you have to manage all that infrastructure and have all those things without having to incur in the expenses of managing that infrastructure. There are other uh, advantages. Like for example, that data gateway performs compression. Uh, so it's a 10 to 1 compression and on this uh, log and, 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 and flow data and, and that you know, allows you to re uh, reduce the, the cost of bandwidth and, and improve the performance. Also, those guys perform HA, uh, high availability and disaster recovery for you. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It's, it's the capability of having, the, the only piece that you will still need to run at home is the app nodes for U UBA and you know all those nice apps that you that you run close to your infrastructure? You don't want to have that in the cloud. Well, you you can actually have uh, uh, an, an on-prem app node that communicates with that uh, remotely. So imagine that you don't have to worry anymore about patching curator or even doing migrations. That can be a big, you know cost savings and, and, and peace of mind. All the data gets encrypted both in transit as well as addressed. And there are servers, I mean there, there are sites that provide this type of uh, uh, solution across the world, you know, several in the US, Brazil, Europe, etc. So again, these are in, in a very short presentation the different options. Uh, it, may, it may not be a single one of these. Uh, it might be a combination, a hybrid of these com of these capabilities. But I hope that this gives you an idea of the different ways. You, you don't have to consume uh, curator in the in in the, in the traditional way alone. As the cloud gains more momentum, keep these options uh, in mind for what you're going to be. Uh, growing and doing more things with your curator environment.